I do not accept that God is with me because I feel He is with me. I accept and confess that He is with me because the Word of God says so. He says, Lord, I am with you always. What is always? Always is all the time. But there are people who will act differently whenever they feel that God is with them or that He is not with them. Now sometimes somebody prays and says, well, I'm not so sure that God heard me. I prayed anyway, but I'm not sure God heard me. Why? Well, I just didn't feel so. What has feeling God to do with it? He said, ask and receive. He said, if we pray in the name of Jesus, the Father hears. He didn't say, if you feel that He hears you, then He hears you. Now, there are people who feel, well, well I, I think that I, I, I'm living well. I think I'm living righteously. Why? Well, I just feel I'm close to God. Feeling that you're close to God has nothing to do with it. There's too many people who live according to their feelings. And so their religiosity has gained the better part of them. Sadly, so many people in that class run churches. So many people like that are pastoring. I'm not critical of them. I'm saying they got a problem. And that means those that they are leading are going to have the same problem. Because they walk in the flesh. They walk in the senses. Now look at the Bible again. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the senses, but after the Spirit. Who walk not after the senses, but after the Spirit. Now, Jesus said, when you say something, believe it. And it will come to pass. Now, he didn't say, it will come to pass if you feel it. He said, if you say it, and doubt not, that which you say shall come to pass. But then we say it, and then we feel differently, and then we confess differently. Then it doesn't happen, and we say, we don't know why it didn't happen. No. He didn't say, if you feel different, change your confession. Come on here. Look at verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, watch, watch the, the tenses, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. He didn't say, shall make me free, but hath already made me free from the law of sin and death. Now I can preach for whole months in that. That's a powerful subject. I, I think we have some tapes in that already. I, I've um, spoken to you on the law of the spirit of life. Hallelujah. Okay, now I'm going to verse 3, where I really wanted to begin with. You remember? Okay. It says, For what the law could not do. He's talking about the law of Moses. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Us, who walk not after the flesh. Us, who walk not after the senses, but after the Spirit. He says the righteousness, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the senses, but after the Spirit. Glory to God. All right, keep coming. Verse 4. That the righteousness of the Lord might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Those who are after the senses, after the flesh, they are concerned with the things of the flesh. But those who mind the things of the Spirit... What are they concerned about? If you, if you are spirit-minded, you'll be concerned with the things of the Spirit. If you are sensuous, carnal, you'll be concerned about the things of the flesh. You see, it, it'll even affect your language. Do you want to kill me? Where did you get that from? 
That's not from the Spirit. That's not from the kingdom. Can you see that? There's a language. You know, sometimes certain things happen to Christians and we wonder, but he was born again. Why, why did it happen? It happened because, you see, you didn't know what that fellow believed. You saw him praying. You knew he was born again. But you didn't know what his tongue was doing. Your life is a picture of your tongue. Never forget it. The Bible says your tongue controls your life. Just because you're born again doesn't mean everything is going to be all right. Your life is in your mouth. That's what the Bible says. Your life is in your mouth. I've been going in and out of sickness. That will be your life. You don't talk like that. You see, when you come into Christ, you have a new language. You belong in the kingdom of God. It's different. You're not allowed to say just anything. In the spirit, you have what we call illegal communication. Now, didn't you read what he said? If you ask anything according to his will, he hears you. Now, that's different from according to his will, he answers you. He says, according to his will, he hears you. And that if we know that he hears us, we ought also to know that we've got the petitions that we desire of him. In other words, when God hears you, you have it made. Now, what does that mean? When you pray according to his will, it means according to his word. When you pray according to his word, he hears. Now, when you pray in a way or in a language that's not according to his word, if you speak outside his word, he doesn't hear you. You see, God doesn't have to say no to your prayer. He just doesn't hear you. When you ask the wrong thing, he just doesn't hear you. But when you ask according to his word, the Bible says all the promises of Christ, of God in Christ, are yes, and in him, so be it. So if you ask according to his word, his answer is yes. His answer is amen, meaning so be it. So you don't ask according to his word and say, well, I don't know why God's not going to answer me. The Bible says his answer is always yes. So long as it is consistent with his word. He said, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. He says the only reason you don't get it when you ask is when you ask outside of his word, you ask amiss. So the problem is not on God's side, it's on man's side. Glory to God. 